Okay, trying that again. Take two. Ha ha. Okay. <laughs> Little technical difficulties here. All good. Hey, who is Craft Carefree with the Ocean? What a great username. All right, so Choice should be joining us. Jean should be joining us um, soon. And we're gonna be doing some more live crafting today. Super excited. Just waiting for them to sign on. Oh, there we go. Hello, hello. Don't point. Here we go. Hello, hello. Hi, hi. Sorry about Sorry that. About little, that. Little, little technical difficulties, you know. As it goes, no As worries. That's the first time I've had that. But um, all good. Hi, all good. Hello. hello, hello. Oh my gosh, I love. I love this. I'm so excited to see these little <laughs> felt gems. Um, it's so funny that you commented um, that you like hadn't noticed them at first. Yeah. In the post, and I too had not put two and two together that um, that I make these and that you make jewelry of a different kinds. So right. I was like, maybe I'll work on that on Sunday. That's Seems perfect. perfect. I know. It's jewelry. It's yeah, it's gems. I'm this is so exciting. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so these are little ornaments. Is that Yeah, they will be. And I'll I don't know if I can pan with um let's see if I can do a little. So these are the ones that I had posted in black and white. Mm-hmm. So cool. I have this shape, this kind of squarish. Um and maybe you can advise me. Is this like a cushion cut type shape? Um radiant cut. Radiant cut. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so I'm starting on this shape, but these are obviously like the, the faces of them and then they'll get, um, sewn to a back and then have a little stuffed and have a little ribbon put on. Oh my God. They're so, so cute. Thanks. Ah! How's your, <laughs> how's your piece going? It's coming along. So right now I basically, I got my, um, I got my pin stem, so this is the brooch, and then it's going to be, um, it's going to have a, a hinged pin, mm -hmm. so it'll connect kind of somewhere up here, and also down there, and hinge open, and so right now what I'm doing is getting ready to solder on the pin findings, so the catches. Okay. Um, so that's that's the next step. Nice. Um, did you did you decide on a um, how you'll be hanging it? Yeah, I decided that it is going to be a pin. Rather oh, nice. than Yeah, rather than a pendant. So okay. Um, I think that I you know the original intention was for this to be a pin, so it could be kind of a little bit more. Uh, inclusive of gender like pretty much you don't have to be a necklace wearer to be able to wear this uh-huh um and uh, i love the instagram polls i just think they're so funny because <laughs> literally it was split exactly down the middle between pin versus pendant and okay. then when i was trying to decide if it was a pendant how it was going to hang mm. it was also split exactly down the middle between two options. I and, participated in that poll, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny because it's like, you know, maybe uh, this is my sign that it's supposed to be a pin. But the, 
the neat thing, I've, I've worked in a, a lot of different jewelry stores and a lot of times it's sort of like, I'm doing really like one of a kind things, very one off. And I realized in this piece, I'm like, Mary, you can make more than one necklace and more than one tree piece and it's and they're certainly not going to be identical to each other anyways they're going to be different from each other mm -hmm. um just by nature of how they're put together i'm also going to do the treatment of the branch slightly differently um i think i'm going to do kind of a little bit more like a curly willow type of vibe for the branch and so nice. it sort of occurred to me that i'll at some point also do a pendant um and then but you have I think a set. I, yeah, but I think I really did want this piece to be a pin so that it could be, um, like I said, more gender inclusive and more, um, because the, the colors of the gems that are going on it are the inclusive flag. And I just, you know, I kind of envision it being like maybe a boutonniere, maybe a, you know, maybe it could be worn on, well, maybe not on the tie, but I don't know. So I could. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's kind of the thought process behind uh, my decision making. Thanks. Um, and I like doing the Instagram mm. polls. I actually think those are super fun. And sometimes, I mean, it really is oftentimes I'm sitting here kind of by myself going, which way should I go? And mm -hmm. <laughs> I, as I'm like struggling to put these facets on, I'm like, but which one goes where? Like, you know, from from one to the next, I like want to reposition them. Like, I understand right. the, the choice, the choice making of it all. <laughs> exactly. I, I think they're so neat. Um, and and yours. I mean, I know we'll talk about this more later. But you're selling. You've got a craft market coming up that these are going to be. Yes. Kind of ready um, for. Yeah, so next Sunday, a week from today, and it's like it's it's funny because like I I'm in Chicago, um, but I've done this market. This will be my second year doing a market in Milwaukee. Um, oh wow! Yeah, that a a friend of mine um, has invited me to, and it's just like it's really good. You know, it's a good time. It's like great energy, um, and it was a lot of fun last year. So I'll be there next Sunday, and then anything. <laughs> Um, and then I'll just kind of stock up my Etsy shop after that. Nice. Yeah. So. Nice. Well, I think those are super great. So now we we know each other through our um, our kind of accountability buddy group that was connected through Urban Craft Uprising. Have you? How are you? You're so far away. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like from craft camp. Um, I know. Tell me how yeah. you got connected with that. Yeah. And like to give a little bit of context, like you and I, yeah, you and I are in the same accountability group, but we didn't really interact that weekend. Um, no. no. Like, I don't think I had a chance to meet you. So, so yeah, it's funny. Um, I was traveling to Seattle already. Um, my okay. boyfriend and I were taking a trip there and I just started Googling like things to do. Whoa, really? Over that weekend in April. And I also like, so I had, um, I had left my job like a year prior and I was already um, practicing embroidery and trying to pursue like different, um, like learning experiences or retreats or whatnot. And I was like, let me just like see if there's anything going on. And then it was like Camp Thundercraft. Yes. Which to me felt like so serendipitous and, you know, like, um, it was just too funny. I was like, it's on an island. It was like a quintessential, like, PNW experience, you know, for me being from the Midwest. So, yeah, I just, I asked my boyfriend, like, is it cool if I abandon you for like 36 <laughs> hours? And he was like, yeah, I'll, I can, you know, I can explore. He like found like shops and stuff and watched some NBA in the hotel and like, yeah, so it was great. That is so mm. random. Like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah. Meaning, I've been meaning to ask you that. And it seems like other people like met you, obviously met you at craft camp. And I don't know how we didn't meet, but, um, 
And I wasn't there on Friday, so I had like less time than other, you know, there was less opportunity, but yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I love that. I think that is so <laughs> cool. I, cause there was another person there that was from like Atlanta. Okay. Um, nice. But otherwise it really is pretty much like just, you know, Seattle, Portland kind of. Yeah. Drawn people from that area so kudos to their marketing to get listed <laughs> somewhere where you were able to see it i know yeah and like you know the fact that like it it was still available and i hadn't missed it like it just oh, yeah, yeah it was perfect yeah i seem to have a um kind of an uncanny knack for you know discovering like an artist on you know like pandora or spotify or whatever and then going and being like, oh my gosh, I really love this, you know, artist or whatever. And then going to the page and like, oh, they were at the show box last week, <laughs> two days ago, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's kind of crazy that you were able to do that. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And then well, and what did you, what did you, like, will you come back, do you think? Or... Well, and that's like what kind of the blessing and the curse of it is like you guys all talk about like the markets you're doing and I get like, I get both nostalgic and like, oh, like, you know, I yeah. feel like a tiny bit of FOMO, but I just love that there's like such a close knit community there. Um, and as I kind of try and, and find more of that in Chicago, um, like it's nice, it's nice to have that, have that be like my first experience. Yeah. Um, I would love to. I um, had mentioned on like one of our recent calls. So I also do like my academic background is in translation and the um, the American Translators Association puts on an annual conference and next year it's in Portland ah. in October. So, I mean, that would be like awesome if I could go for that and then hang out with you guys for a yeah, while. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we'll definitely have to do an in-person accountability buddy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I really, you know, I had always worked with other people. And so when I opened up my own studio, I definitely realized that there's a, just a lack of kind of community when you're, I mean, we all have community in some way, but um, community in the, business of craft i mean it can be it's such an isolating thing sometimes because you're yeah. by nature i think we're all a little on either ambiverted or extra you know introverted people <laughs> absolutely yeah <laughs> and yes, you know perfectly content to just sit and um you know do a quiet activity for hours and hours at a time mm -hmm. so so I think um, bringing a community together was just so brilliant, you know, of the way yes. we put it all together. Urban Craft Rising, uh, Craft Uprising has been just really neat to be, I, I you know, I don't do shows with them. Okay, um, I wondered. Yeah, I probably, I probably won't. I did talk to, um, oh man, it's the afternoon brain, um, Kristen. Yeah. Uh, at one point, I had a phone call with her. Maybe um, I'm not sure when, but anyways, just asking her, kind of like, okay, you know, given the type of work I do, given my price points, you know, what do you think the success rate is for somebody like me? And have you had fine jewelers before? And the takeaway from the phone call really did kind of seem to be that I'm probably a little expensive for like a craft fair. Gotcha. Um, there, I think they do have a couple different types of um, events, and I, I think there were some that maybe were more successful than others. Um, and and they have had people that had, you know, kind of, high, kind of higher end stuff, but um, you also, you know, for me, it would be successful if it was just getting my name out there and getting people to understand who I was. Uh -huh. um, as from an advertising perspective, but also from, to her point, from her, from a, um, a visitor's perspective, you know, they don't want, 
they sometimes, I guess, get feedback that, you know, they have a lot of expensive vendors or whatever, and then I would just be one more adding Got to the pile or whatever. So um, I would have to just, I guess, be more strategic about it and more strategic what I brought and mm -hmm. yeah. And so, but then it's also, you know, like what we're, it's also all about, there's so much setup involved and um, yeah you know, me buying cases and to keep my stuff safe. And I just, I don't know. It seems oh, you've got, yeah, you've got like the security. I, I mean, I would imagine it's like a little bit more nerve wracking yeah, uh, having, yeah. Yeah. I mean, stones. And, you know, we used to do like a uh, wedding show and I'm going to do a wedding show in February. I'm very excited about that, but that's cool. definitely a little bit more targeted. And then I really, I don't bring everything. I just have like a nice little sampling. Uh-huh. Um, um, and then it's really, again, it's more about advertising. It's more about me getting connected with potential clients for later, um, which makes a little bit more sense. So I think, I think if I'm focusing on things like that, I'm okay to just focus on wedding shows and, and then just going to craft camp for all of the cool business advice and business mentorship yeah. that's available there. Yeah. Did you go this past year again? I did. Okay. I went, nice. um, yeah, I went, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if you went this year or last year, but, um, it was last year. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I will go again. Um, it was interesting going the second time. It was great. And I learned a lot. What surprised mm -hmm. me just a little bit was how often I, <laughs> how often I was, um, I kind of stuck to more people that were there last year. I didn't meet as many new people, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Which yeah. Me a little bit, but um, yeah, no, it was a great, it was a great experience and definitely worth going. And I still last year they had it where the very first session was only craft. Okay. Um, so the only offerings were craft offerings, which was actually the only time I've ever done an actual craft component at craft camp. <laughs> so you, you mean like a class? Yeah. Rather than the okay. business classes. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. Cause I just, and I feel like maybe if I go next year, maybe I've taken a, you know, enough of the business classes, maybe I could actually like branch out and take another crafting class, which would be fun. Yeah. I know I didn't do any either. And okay. um, I feel like it, yeah, it's, it's a good idea. Cause I'm sure it is like a nice um, offset to like racking our brains over stuff that's yeah. <laughs> new and hard to comprehend. And yeah. So what kind of things did you, it, and, and how long had you been doing um, your business before you went to the camp? Not, not really at all. I think I technically like hit, go on my Etsy shop like earlier that month. Um, okay. Yeah, but I had only ever done like some small commissions. Um, I think I did like a church craft show like 10 years ago or 15 mm -hmm. years ago. Um, but I have I've been um, doing some form of like stitch work since I was a kid, you know, um, mm -hmm. through a combination of like my the women in my family, like kind of passing it down and then um, like fixing up vintage clothes with like little embroidery if they had, like there were things I needed to cover up or whatever that I had gotten from like a secondhand store. Um, but yeah, it was, it's only, I've only been doing it for like maybe a year and a half. Okay. Uh, in earnest. Yeah. So, and it's, I mean, yeah, I don't know how long like your average piece takes you but embroidery is so time consuming that a lot of it has been like as I've been trying to figure out like what's going to be marketable like what do I what I enjoy mm -hmm. I, like my process for I guess like R&D it just takes so long that um you know progress feels slow for me but it's yeah. like extremely gratifying and fun and yeah so yeah it um I mean, like this piece I've been working on over the course of three live crafts, I would say it's probably got um, another maybe four hours left if I'm lucky. Okay. Um, but there isn't, 
but since it's not something I have to repeat over and over again, <laughs> yeah, um, all of that goes into the you know the final. I, I mean, you know, then I move on to the next thing. Um, I don't have to worry about making twenty more or ten more or a hundred more. I just am like, okay, that's done. Now I'm I've moved on to the next thing. Yeah. Nice. Which I think to some extent suits my ADD pretty well. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the dopamine, like, it's not like, oh my God, I got 10 more. I mean, even this, I'm, I'm sure this is going to be setting 11 gems and that can get a little bit um, old. <laughs> yeah. But, but I know I'm, I'm just, I'm really excited to see it when it's finished. So I know it's going to be worthwhile doing. Um, right now I have to move. So I put the pin stem binding on and I looked at it and realized, no, it actually needs to be moved up a little bit because I don't want it to be visible from the front. Gotcha. So it's on the fly R and D, I guess is rather than. <laughs> oh, hear that. Like as I'm <laughs> struggling with these threads. Yeah. <laughs> I also, I'm trying to make sure that I'm okay. I'm that I'm like visible in the little window of. Yeah, I can see you pretty okay. well. Okay. I can see you pretty well. A lot of people have joined. If anybody has questions or anything like that, feel free to shout them out. I have my iPad going so I can actually kind of see if people comment because my other, you know, my phone is obviously upside down and above my head. Um, I don't, you know, I think last, uh, last week or last time I did this, um, there was somebody who was commenting a lot, but most people just watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then this will get um, edited just a tiny bit and then thrown up on YouTube at some point when I get around to downloading it and all of that. So hopefully yeah. maybe next week when I'm kind of have downtime from being, um, having my surgery, maybe I'll be able to do that. Oh yeah. Get that going. Yeah. That seems like a great, <laughs> hopefully minimal exertion. I hope so. Mm -hmm. It's all gonna go, but we'll see. It's like just the worst <laughs> time in the world to have to have a surgery, but um, I know. Well, if it makes you feel better, I've had a December seventeenth um, hand surgery before. Oh wow! So, um, cool. so that yeah, it made. I just like I have one memory of like trying to stir mashed potatoes on Christmas, and that was <laughs> like quite taxing. But um, oh. other than that. <laughs> I had Not a hand cheating. surgery maybe, um, I want to say maybe 10, 12 years ago. And okay. um, it was nerve wracking because I mean, yeah. it's a simple surgery, but it was, it was quite nerve wracking. Cause I'm like, I, I have to have my hands. Yeah. Um, definitely. Yeah. Otherwise I'm just going to, well, I mean, you know, Dale Chihuly doesn't blow glass anymore. Um, because oh, really? he lost his eye or eyesight or I'm not sure he lost an eye. And so he doesn't do much of the glass blowing anymore. He just, it's all done at his studio and at, you know, Oh my gosh. Supervised by him, but he doesn't actually do the, um, the glass blowing. So then I guess I could just be like that. I could just order other people around. <laughs> To, yeah, have, uh, yeah, delegate. <laughs> exactly. But no, I, I really, I really hope that that's never going to be the. Um, was he, was he injured like blowing glass or I, no? Gosh, I cannot remember. Maybe somebody else on here knows, but I, I can't that's remember. Crazy. All I okay. remember, oh, all I know is that um, I had a former boss who really didn't have a lot of respect for Dale Chihuly because he didn't do his own pieces, but he, they're all signed Dale Chihuly or whatever. Got um, it. But at the same time, this was my boss who was having us sign all of the pieces with the company name. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a little ironic. It was a little like, a little oh. bit of hypocrisy. Yeah. I mean, just a little. And, um, right. I, I can definitely see both sides. I can definitely see how it could be, um, yeah. Got it. Kind of view it from both ways. Um, yeah. And I think in the jewelry industry, actually, that's kind of a, there's a lot of that going on right now. Um, where. Like a um, lead 
designer and then you have people that are calling themselves jewelers that are designers okay and they don't ever actually like touch the work or do any of the work um and there isn't a term i mean obviously you can say i'm a jewelry designer and but i'm a jewelry designer so you can't say well that definitely using that verbiage precludes you from you know understanding what it is that i actually do um but and then there are people who you know have studios and then have everybody else do all the components of the work um right and, and it's not and i'm not saying that's worse or better but it is very interesting that it is um something that's kind of happening a lot yeah um and then so i you know when people ask me what i do you know sometimes i say i'm a goldsmith and then they look at me like i don't you know they don't <laughs> know what that is I say okay you know uh, and then i say okay i'm a jeweler um and i think that they have this sense that um I should have a whole bunch of jewelry on and I'm just <laughs> that I'm a jewelry designer. I mean, it's just such a funny, like, and I guess yeah. it doesn't necessarily matter, uh -huh. but it does some, sometimes kind of irritate me when, um, when there are people calling themselves jewelers that are, that are just designers. So I don't know. Yeah. That like that to me, I, I can understand the, like, there's definitely a distinction between like using a computer or even, yeah hand designing versus like because i like i have wondered that about you as well and i like your persona to me is like this forger like i'm like she's a she forges jewelry like <laughs> and i don't even know if you would ever like use that um descriptor yeah. of yourself but <laughs> like it is it is um you know high stakes and like just seems like heavy machinery and stuff yeah well and it's so funny because i don't know like we have these ideas on our head about what a crafter is, what a jeweler is, what a person who sews is. And, and last, yeah. last um, live craft was um, Matthew Hagum and he's uh, my marketing mentor, but he was also doing crochet and he was making like these super wild and um, wacky like crochet sculptures. But okay. then the way he was talking about them and the way that he was crafting them really did bring them more into an art form. Mm -hmm. and you say, you know, I'm a crafter, I'm a crocheter. Even that, it's kind of, um, it oversimplifies, I think, the, the level of um, what you're actually doing when you're doing it. Yeah. But we did find out that was interesting is that all crochet is hand done. There's no machinery that does crochet, which I thought was super interesting. Okay. And then, and, but, and you do a lot of cross stitch stuff as well, right? That's kind of a. I, I only do a little bit. Um, I, I just started doing, um, like I used to do more. I have kind of a large format, um, like gridded uh wall shelf that i did um a cross stitch thing on but um and then i made some patches earlier this year but most of it is um most of it's embroidery like hand oh, okay. embroidery yeah um what and what tell me the difference between hand embroidery and cross stitch is so like cross stitch falls under embroidery like if you okay. consider it an umbrella i think technically like needlepoint falls under that umbrella as well um and those are both gridded like if you take like i have this um mm -hmm. you know like with cross stitch you're using to like predefined holes and you're only making uh, x you're making x okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah and with needlepoint you're like i think doing a diagonal stitch every time also mm -hmm. in a kind of a predetermined grid um so with embroidery it can be you know I'll sometimes I'll put um you can use different mechanisms to like transfer a design on or you can just like free embroider um but I like to do I tend towards because like I have a background in um marketing and like I said language so mm -hmm. I kind of I feel like I always come back to like copy and like like words um mm -hmm. 
And so a lot of it's like word art. And so I'll play around with like different type styles and then different fill stitches. Like I love satin stitch, which is like, this is the opposite of, you know, what I might be doing on any other day, but um, satin stitch is like a very laborious filling in with like um, lines of stitching repeatedly next to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and that's definitely like probably on the high end of takes forever. Right. You know? So balancing it with like, this is just applique really. Um, okay. what I'm doing today. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Um, I don't know. Happy to answer any other questions. Yeah, no, but that's yeah awesome. I, I love learning a little bit more <laughs> about what, because I mean, yeah, like you said, if you, if I tell people I'm a jeweler, what is that? Well, like any job, I, I, my joke is always like, I have friends of mine who, you know, work in office jobs and stuff. Uh -huh. and I have no visualization about what they're <laughs> actually doing on a day to day. I'm like, are you just taking like pieces of paper and moving them from <laughs> one like, folder to another, or you just entering mm -hmm. that into a computer? Like, <laughs> what is and, and then what is the function of that? Like, why are you? I have I really right. have no mental capacity for understanding what that is. Because yeah, this is all I've ever done. Okay such a goofy kind of way to look at the world but you know somebody That's tells awesome. me that they are a software engineer for amazon uh -huh. I, I don't know what that actually is or what that looks like like i said on a day-to-day -day. right right you know so I, but most people don't know what this what i'm doing looks like <laughs> yeah I get, yeah, and I get so many people who are like, oh, so you it's you do cross-stitch, or you do, like, they have one one idea in their head, and then that's, yeah. like, the, the catch-all. Um, I was wondering, because I, so, I have taken, like, I went to a, a pretty big high school, and I actually took a, I got to take a jewelry design class yeah. in high school. So, I wondered, like, where do you have, you know, this, um, has this like generated from like your family or just your own interest? Yeah, no, or... for sure. So my uncle owned a jewelry store up in Woodenville, which is north of Seattle. Okay. And I went to art school. And when I graduated from art school, or right before I graduated, you know, I didn't really have any prospects coming out of art school that I was um, super excited by. And I mean, it, the art world, I've talked about this before, um, the art world at the time was very um, esoteric, very heady, very, um, gotcha. like, I just felt like I was going to have to, like, follow along and go home with people with the paintings and explain it to people all the time, because it, that was the art world at the time, and my stuff really wasn't like that, and I wanted people to bring their own interpretation and ideas. It's like abstract narrative type of artwork. Yeah, but not, you know, abstract, abstract, abstract. And anyways, um, so I was, I was frustrated by the art world at the time as well. And so when my uncle called me up and offered me an apprenticeship, it, um, it definitely, I knew at the time I had a, a mental thought pattern of the fact that like, if I do this, this is probably going to be my career. Like, I don't know if that was just like a weird like mm. sometimes you just have these moments in life where you just know a decision that you're making is going to be yeah. a decision. Like and a lot I, of clar clarity. That's yeah, cool. just one yeah. of those weird moments. And I, I kind of knew, like, if I do this. And I had an art studio, too. I, I did both. I apprenticed. So anyways, I apprenticed, apprenticed with him. And then I, um, I also had an art studio. And I, you know, got into a gallery and I had a show. But it was just so much schmoozing and selling myself which of course i still have to do now so it's not like i'm yeah. proud of that but um at the time i was 23 years old or whatever i was so uncomfortable doing that yeah um and um and i didn't believe in it either so okay like i didn't believe in the the selling and the schmoozing, the sh schmoozing and yeah I feel um, like. <laughs> anyway, so, so yeah, I just pursued art, but, um, or I mean, jewelry, but I, it is funny because I did, I also took jewelry classes in high school. I worked for a jeweler in high school. 
um, after school, but it, it never occurred to me that this, that that was what I was actually going to be doing for okay. 29 years. Next May will be my 30th year of being. A oh my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's very cool. It's incredible that I've been able to support myself. Not yeah. And my daughter essentially too, with a form of art. Right. And I do view it as a form of art. Um, it definitely, I've had this discussion a lot too before that intersection of art and craft. I feel like we're right there. Yeah. Um, or I'm right there, but no, I'm absolutely. Still, yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't bother me. Okay. I think I've soldered these things off. That was a lot of positioning and soldering. Oh, let's see. Um, <laughs> One of the Are things you? I used to joke about, because I share, when when I do the casting, the client comes in and casts pieces with me. And it's, it's very exciting, because it's like a very exciting moment. It goes really fast, there's fire. And, and then the next thing, they're holding the piece that we've been working on for so long. It's, you know, not done and shiny, but it's, it's cast. And I would always joke, yeah, you know, the reason why we share this is it's so fast and exciting and immediate and, you know, the rest of it is so tedious. And I always joke, like, nobody would have a reality show about jewelers because <laughs> it's, like, so boring. Nobody wants to watch us just pick at things. And then, of course, right. you know, I'm doing this. And then I'm also, there is a reality show. It's a British reality show like a competition, you know, kind of like Top Chef, I guess. Yeah. Of jewelers. Okay, that's awesome. Which cracks me up. I'm sure it's I... very well edited to be more exciting. <laughs> well, I mean, there's got to be like some crazy personalities and, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I'll have to check that out. I recently learned about like some ceramics. Um... Oh, yeah competition show too I feel like maybe I heard about that um I mean and then you know with Instagram um kind of you know coming coming on and then people are starting to show process and of course a lot of it is so sped up um and I, I just kind of thought with this you know I got inspired by watching this guy who was on um uh he has an account he was doing embroid uh no he was making he was doing quilting and okay. he was just kind of doing it real time live real time nice. and it was fascinating to watch and then i was also working at the same time on a wax model and just kind of watching the live and it it felt kind of cool like oh i kind of like i have a co-worker you know yes. <laughs> listening yeah. to this person talk and i just thought yeah That's so nice yeah something that people could watch Mm -hmm. if they want to and if they don't I don't know yeah. I'm doing it yeah. anyway right <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> and then maybe mm. people can see and appreciate how long it takes to make something as well yeah definitely um, I got really obsessed with um, flea market flip this year it's like a very it's not very old but it's from like the 2010s and it's just people going to flea markets and refurbing like three pieces in an episode okay. and then selling it. Oh, it's so formulaic. Like it's so it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty predictable, but um, it's like so satisfying and like such a fun watch because you just get to see like what these people reimagine things as. And then like, are, you know, a lot of times it's like what people in tiny New York apartments are going to like spend their money on and it's always like a bar cart and uh, <laughs> like a bistro set. Like you can't have four chairs, but you can't have two. So, um, yeah. So I'm I'm here for the like the the maker shows and the like, yeah. I love awesome. it. I really love all that. I I I actually really also enjoy watching cooking shows. And ironically, when I'm sick. I really love watching like cooking competition shows <laughs> and different 
making, you know, different shows like that. And I think part of it is because you're not really focusing on plot. And yeah. so you can kind of fall asleep halfway through and you haven't really missed anything. Um, but I definitely, yeah. I definitely have to check that show out. I've heard of that show. I haven't seen it. Um, but it's so completely up my alley because that's something I love to do. <laughs> yeah, it's oh yeah, because you you work at that um that giant... the rotary auction. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. That and was that... so crazy to hear about. That's so cool. Oh, I know. I was gonna say like depending on, but you're you're gonna be out at a different time. But it is, yeah. it is an absolute hoot. Like I <laughs> can't even describe. You can't. The, there's no description of the rotary auction that ever would do it justice. And yeah. People kind of have do have to see it for themselves. Um, but it is it is so fun. You said it's like is it a, a school that it's held at? And it's yeah, just it's like an the entire, entire grounds. Yeah, it's an entire school. The entire grounds of the school is all completely um, taken over by the rotary auction, and it's um, over two thousand volunteers they had last year. It takes okay. eight days to set up. And then in one day, we raised $800,000. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Damn. Um, and it, I mean, it's one of those things that people, like, they line up the night before. Or, you know, they they sleep in their cars outside the night before, and they start lining up at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. And you go to this thing the night before. It's a preview. So okay. you can see what it is that you're going to run for. <laughs> because nice. And... They have about 450 bicycles every year. Oh, right. Bikes. Was that's, the, yeah. <laughs> that's on, on my side of the building. I'm out in building supplies. And on my side of the building, that's the thing that, that's the side where um, people are mostly running for bikes. And okay. uh, every once in a while they run for something in building supplies. But um, most of them are running for bikes. And it's, it is a, a mad dash. Like, um, yeah. They should do a reality TV show about the rotary <laughs> auction, actually. I think that would be hilarious. They should. It, As you're saying that, it reminds me of, like, I feel like I've been hearing a lot about um, how this, like, Black Friday has um, oh, yes. evolved and changed and, like, how kids these days, like, don't know the brawls that, like, broke out when people were trying to get TVs from Best Buy. Oh, and that, yeah. like, sales are just, like, sort of... To, you know, it's like a week long, two week long sales now. So the excitement is, you know, it's just like changed yeah. a lot. I um, wonder if part of that is because of the fact that stores need more than one day of those sales type of revenue. Because then you were getting the pre pre Black Friday and then, <laughs> you know, yeah. or, or the and then stores were feeling the pressure to be open on Thanksgiving. Oh, which yeah. Which you know, was a big I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, I think it's kind of good that it's died down. Yeah. Um, and it's always Definitely. funny to, to kind of laugh at, <laughs> <laughs> but, yep. um, I've never done Have you ever done it? I like, it's like funny. Like running my, for something. I, or, I was going to say, I feel like I, um, I feel like I met, and it's my brother is on here. I don't know if he could confirm. I feel like I met like a, like maybe my boyfriend, my boyfriend at the time, and like uh, my brother's brother in law were waiting or something for some Ooh. game system, and like maybe we met to like bring them food. Like I, I don't know. Ah, it was so ah. long ago. Um, but other than that, like definitely not. Like I've never. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember taking advantage like it was much more of a tradition when I was little for um me to go with like my mom and my aunts um the day after Christmas uh mm -hmm. to just like get lunch and go to the mall and like Little buy wrapping day. paper that's on clearance oh my gosh yes yeah so. I do love the my latest favorite I mean this is so dorky this has nothing to do with craft but that's okay I love it <laughs> um but one of my favorite things to do is about um two weeks after christmas is i go into like rite aid and walgreens and stuff and they have all these dumb like um dove body soap 
you know, <laughs> gift packaging and they're on like 80% off. Yeah. And, and they're not, they're not Christmassy at all. They just happen to be like in some, like who's buying a Dove body <laughs> soap triple pack as a gift for anybody anyways. I don't know. I don't but know. then they're on such a good deal. And mm. that's usually, I'm like, yeah. So I, I go, like, I go in and I get those. Nice. On like super clearance and then I have whatever body wash, you know, I'm not that particular. But I always yeah, I always thought that was kind of funny. And then of course yeah. I paper for next year, but that's about it. Um my aunt moved she lives here, but her husband for well when he was working, um, before he retired, he was doing construction consulting and on big projects. And so he was working for a several years in Omaha, um, no, huh. yeah, Omaha, yeah, okay, Nebraska. Well, I mean, yeah, we're gonna say it's Omaha. Well, and I was <laughs> going to school in Kansas City, sure. okay. and it was easier to get there for Thanksgiving, and so, um, and they they were the family that they don't do this anymore, which is interesting, but they were the family that like right after thanksgiving dinner was finished they would the newspaper would come out with all the ads right and then yep. they would like plan their day of the next day of shopping or she would yeah and i remember that happening and it was just me and her and my cousin and my uncle she's like spreading the table out with all of the ads and everything and then she's like she's telling me and you know there used to be a store i guess called tuesday morning and yes, she's like, I've okay, so the it. first place we're going is Tuesday morning, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, kind of <laughs> in my head going, I'm not even going to be around on Tuesday. I was a college student. I think I had $15 in my pocket. <laughs> Christmas shopping was really not on my agenda. But she's like, okay, you know, the first place we're going to go is Tuesday morning. It's going to be like 5.30 and blah, blah, blah. She had the whole day mapped out. <laughs> and I was like, whatever, whatever. And then she woke me up at like four in the morning. And she's like, okay, oh it's time God. to go. And I was like, what? And we shopped all day. We got home at like 6 p.m. And uh -huh. my cousin and my uncle had put the lights up on the house and done the house. It was uh -huh. like the man, the man job. Yeah. I just remember being like, this is so far removed from my life <laughs> at the, where, you know, I have like $3 to last me an entire month type of college student level living. So did you feel like it was like net positive or like just sort of insane? Like... It was insane and <laughs> I didn't, I, I really did. I think that was one of my first moments of kind of going, what are we, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Like I, I can understand it um, in terms of like, you know, getting a deal and then also getting some of the craziness of like, if you are holiday shopping, like getting it out of the way so you can like enjoy mm -hmm. December, but yeah, it's, it's not really, well, not for me. I, I don't know what your experience is like, but I mean, I imagine that, I mean, Christmas time is always just nuts for me. Yeah. To the point where, you know, my family knows, everybody knows, like, Everybody's like, oh, we're going to go do this thing and we're going to go to this, you know, live nativity or we're going to do blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm just going to be at work. <laughs> <laughs> nice knowing you. It's going to be a while before you see me. Yeah. I um, still haven't, I, like I see posts sometimes of like other um, kind of stitch artists and they're like, it's July, you know what that means. And they're like already starting on like holiday oh. inventory. And I'm like, uh, try me in like August, but more likely November when I get my shit together. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I guess you do have to. So for me, it's a, it is just making sure I've got some stock and stuff like that. But in past places I've worked, it's actually has been a lot of, um, definitely a lot of uh a few months before but this is the you know i'm only this will be my third christmas in this in my own business and mm. um it's oh my gosh look i don't know if you can see that or not but i just pulled this it's this Ooh. Prairie Ooh. 
Yeah. I used to, um, that I'll sink this into so that I can set the stones without mashing the shape. And okay. I just pulled this out of the heat because it's, it's heat. It molds with the heat. And I don't know if that looks like a frog face to me. <laughs> like I definitely see two indents that look kind of like, oh, are you They're talking about the like... protruding part or the yeah, part? Oh, I see what you're talking frog about. Or frog or something. He's so cute. Yeah. Oh, hi buddy. I'm sorry. I have to destroy your little weird frog face. So is there an actual like substance in there that's adhering the stones or what's like how, so how I does will, it work? Basically what I do is I'm going to put this gray goo and mold it into this holder. And this is malleable because it's warm. Okay. And once it cools, it'll become like rock hard. And that will give enough um, backbone to really hold hold the um, hold the piece. And then I'm going to hammer metal over all of the gems. Dang. Yeah. Uh, that's fascinating. I don't like. I can't quite picture it, but it sounds badass. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you will see very shortly. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah. So basically, anything that you do in jewelry making has to be some type of mechanical hold, um, oh, because yeah. gluing, you know, is not permanent. I mean, there are so pearls are glued. That's okay. Pretty typical. But otherwise, gems are set. And setting means mechanically putting metal over the gem to keep them in place so they can't fall out. And so whether it's prongs that are being folded over a gem, or in this case, this is these are going to be bezels. So there will be gold wrapped all the way around each gem. And okay. it's done with a hammer and a punch. Got it. So the, that's what I'm doing now is um, prepping this. So, but with a hammer and a punch, if I don't support underneath all of these little branches and everything, I could collapse my piece. Okay. So I don't want to do that. So it's sitting in the gray stuff. Okay. Yeah, I see. It's sitting in the gray goo. And right now what I'm doing is like kind um. of making sure that it's going to be wrapped up all the way around you're I'm, I'm getting flashbacks i remember bezel like i made something with a yeah. black stone in it <laughs> <laughs> okay i have to do a noise thing for just a sure. second oh, this is a heat gun basically the stuff was cooling too quickly so rather than taking it out i'm just gonna use the heat gun to reheat Nice. We didn't used to have this stuff before. We had to use shellac, which is massive pain to use. Hmm. But this, the gray stuff, it's um, thermo thermoset. You can use it to actually make ergonomic, like plier handles or oh, cool. You know, adaptive tools and stuff like that. It's really yeah. Good like that that's awesome yeah. i'm uh <laughs> like i'm very aware of the like disparity between our two i'm like oh you, like you got all these like cool tools and stuff and like like chem like i'm sure you have to be aware of a lot of like safety things and everything i work with is like so soft except for you know needles and scissors that's um, true. I guess some of the things, though, that you would probably have to, I mean, I don't have to worry necessarily about stuff getting dirty. In fact, oh, okay. In fact, working with jewelry, my hands are always very dirty looking. They're stained, you know, because the polishing compounds and stuff like that. Yeah. But I think with, um, with sewing, and then the other thing is most most of the time, not all of the time, but most of the time you can kind of recover um, and go go backwards if you need to, um, unsolder things or, you know, unset gems or something like that. But I think with um, 
especially some of, some of the projects like you know if you pull those stitches out too many times you're going to see holes it's going to look weird and yeah I, you're right Dep yeah depending on the fabric and how much you sort on. of yeah yeah but that's a very good point painting and things like that yeah but i think they <clears throat> it is very Come on. i mean when i again when i went out on my own i had to tool up i had about I had a decent amount of stuff already from my home workshop, but getting everything I needed for the studio, it was, um, did you say your home workshop? Yeah, I had a home, I had a home workshop. Oh, home time. workshop. Okay. Oh, oh, home workshop. No, I was no. like, what? no, there's no homework. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> I never did my homework even. So. <laughs> um, so you set your, you had a tool. Up. Yeah, but I had to, I had to, buy about forty thousand dollars worth of tools oh my gosh that's and there's a lot. still tools that i would like to have um there's probably about another twenty five thousand dollars of tools that i would really like to have right now i still have to use subcontractors for a few things because they have like a laser welder there's mm. certain things that i i don't have that i would really like to have yeah um, and i think it 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 is very it's a funny industry to be in and it's very cost prohibitive and it's also hard to get your foot in the door um is it what's it like like gender wise is there like a big uh favored like one way or the other yeah it, it definitely at, the, at, at at this level it's definitely male dominated field. okay yeah interesting and 